Ha ha hi everybody! Last Outrider here with another part of the Exodites. And who are they? Have you been wondering more about who are those dragons in the Exodites army? Well, don't worry about it because you are about to learn now. Here we go. Ready? This is going to focus also more on Exodite society as a whole and how it's organized. Specifically, how many Exodites do you think there are? Are there a big number of them? Are there, ma I mean, are there like, are there as many Exodites as there are Craft World Eldar? Are there as many Exodites as there are Dark Eldar? Or are they just tiny little colonies which you might only get a tiny detachment of? What do you think? What do you think? Because by the time I end this video, you will have the answer to all those questions. So I just want to give you a little time right now to answer them yourselves. That's why I'm talking, blah, 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 blah. Before I answer them, those questions, this way you will know if you were right about the fluff before you heard it. Okay, uh, that's enough time. <clears throat> The Exodites are a tribal people. Each tribe owes allegiance to a local ruling tribe, which in turn owes fealty to the planet's king and his royal tribe. Although not openly warlike, the Exodites are a robust, self-confident people, and they are and they have the legendary pride slash arrogance of the Eldar race. Upon wars between tribes, open wars between tribes are rare, but skirmishes between rival dragon knights, dragon knights, what's a dragon knight? It's an Eldar riding a dragon, are common. <laughs> Such matters have seen as part of a knight's training, and the dangers of death or serious injury are an accepted part of a young warrior's life. Well, I should freaking hope so. If somebody has said, I want to be a warrior, if the concepts of danger and death were a problem for them, they should probably have picked a different career. Next, war and battle are not uncommon on the worlds of the Exodites. Orc raids are a constant threat, and the Great Devourer sees the boundless biomass of their worlds as a feast to surpass any other. That means Tyranids have a preference for Exodite worlds, which means they've already been there, which means Exodites have successfully fought off Tyranids. That is no small thing. Next, let's see. Amongst the most persistent foe, however, are the human settlers of the night worlds. There you go. We got dragon knights and we got imperial knights and whole knightly families. Dragon knights now have their fluff counter. See, dragon knights were a problem because dragon, uh, I mean imperial knights had a problem because they were the only uh, dark age faction. In other words, they predated the Imperium. Everybody else comes after and during the last 10,000 years, but Imperial Night Worlds were before the Imperium, before even the Unification Wars, during the uh, Great Night, the Long Night, when nobody talked to anybody. So now they have a counter. Now they can interact with somebody else in the Fluff Universe. Apparently, Exodite Worlds and Imperial night worlds have a very large overlap in territory. They've been living together for thousands of years, not more longer than 10,000 years. So now you have an entirely different fluff world. Eldar and human knights beating the shit out of each other long before the Great Crusade or the Age of the Emperor. Ponder that.
Let's get back to it. <clears throat> Where are we at? Here we go. Amongst the most persistent foes are the human settlers of the night worlds, which lie closely intermingled with the planets of the Exodites. The nobles that pilot imperial knights are aggressive, warlike people whose determined independence makes it difficult for even the Imperium to control them. See? Like the Exodites, they are descendants of ancient settlers, raid, raised amidst constant danger and proud of their autonomy. Their fierce war machines are a common sight on the Exodite world. Bingo! That answers that. Battles between giant war machines and valiant dragon warriors are always hard-fought and destructive. But the Eldar are capable of aggression, too. They use the webway to reach the night worlds, where their raids are often so devastating that the entire planets are subsequently abandoned by their human inhabitants. So this answers a lot of those questions that I asked you at the beginning of the video. Exarchs, Exodites are probably, possibly, the largest Eldar faction in a scale with Craft World being on this side and Dark Eldar being on this side. Exodites are just going to be the happy middle, okay? They're about as psychic as humans are, so they don't need um, seer stones to protect their minds. And on the other side are the Dark Eldar, which are not psychic at all anymore because it's too dangerous for them to use any psychics in the webway. And now you have Dragonites. But you also saw their size. Okay? Dragon warriors are not going to be Eldar on cold ones. So for all of you people who customized those, feature, those figures, I'm sorry. It's, it's, it's not going to be, that, that's not a dragon knight. Maybe that's going to be dragon squires or something. I'm sure they'll have it. But the dragon knight is going to be on a model the size of an imperial knight. It's going to be, that makes it essentially bigger than, than even a monstrous creature. Well, if they even make it a monstrous It's going to be big. It's Imperial Knight big, which means it's Imperial Knight point cost big. That is how I would see them. Everything else is going to be... And then you can just... Imagine, they already said there's Megadons, which is then going to be carrying all types of howdas and all types of weapons and all types of things. So, boom! We will carry on next time. Until then...